Alright everyone, we've actually got something pretty serious to talk about at the start of today's video. Something that, that needs to be said. It's not a joke, it's not funny. Take a seat because it's serious. I need your full attention. Eyes up here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Derek McInnes has blasted the SPFL and the Glasgow Rangers just recently. And the reason for doing so is because Aberdeen, away from home, had to wear their away kit. Throw, throw up the headline. This is, this is just too far now, you know what I mean? Aberdeen just continues just to get the punches. Being forced to wear your away kit when you're playing away from home. What is the point of that? Away kits, away from home, it'll never catch on. This needs to be stopped and I feel they have that Celtic Cucks back because this just isn't good enough. I really hope that Aberdeen players are alright. I think the game should be replayed because I genuinely believe the only reason they had one shot on target and got absolutely slap silly is because they were wearing grey instead of red. Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we are back with another brand new video. Today is a video we will be finally breaking down and looking at the next Rangers player which is Greg freaking Stewart. We were breaking down his player profile, reviewing him, see where he's going to be playing and look at the overall stats. So let's just jump into it then shall we? 3, 2, one. Story number one then is going to be about Mr. Greg Stewart himself, that's right, this is a name that's been linked with Rangers for a couple of weeks and even in the comments section people have been asking where is the video CG on Greg Stewart. Now if you watch the, the live stream of me, Baz Bowski and Paul at Seas, we kind of reflected on the Greg Stewart name and gave our thoughts and opinions on there and I didn't want to make a full video until it was closer to being complete. Now the same people that broke the news about Jake Hasty signing for the Glasgow Rangers is writing that Greg Stewart has signed a two year agreement with the Glasgow Rangers with an option of a third. So all the signs are kind of pointing that Greg Stewart will be a Rangers player this season. So what kind of player are we actually getting? Now obviously Greg Stewart is 29 years old. He's been around the bush, man. He started at Syngenta. I played a couple of games against them at the amateur level. <laughs> we never won once. Okay, we go beat pretty heavily every time. He was at Cowden Beef. He went to Dundee. He obviously got his move to Birmingham City where it looked like he was going to really kick on. But it never worked there at all. I mean, he was even dropped from the starting squads earlier on in the season. He was loaned right back to Aberdeen. He spent a year there. Last year he came back to Birmingham was trying to build his name back up there. Once again, they didn't deem him good enough to play in that system or setup. So he got loaned out to Kilmarnock, and this is where he really, really started to explode because Kilmarnock. Say what you want about Stevie Clark and everything, they actually play pretty damn good football. You look at Jordan Jones, like you got Brobes, they play the ball all across the ground, it's fast moving, very intertwining, very clever forward play, you see that with their movement. And that's suited to Greg Stewart's game to an absolute T. You look at where he's best, it's when the ball is at his feet and he's able to run at defenders, whether it's tight spaced, if he's tight marked, the better because he's got a nice little quick turn of pace, he's also good with either side as well. He can play right across the entire attacking line, whether it's left attacking, right, or even the striking position. And he even at Cam if needed. And I think if Greg Stewart actually stayed with Kumana throughout the entire year, I think everyone would be a lot more excited about this transfer because he was genuinely so in form. I mean, you look at his actual stats for Kumana Cologne, he played 16 games, he had 8 goals and 7 assists. That's absolutely incredible. Unfortunately, that was cut short as, as he was called back by Birmingham City, then loaned directly right back out to Aberdeen. Not only did it sort of knock his conference, but also put him in a team that didn't fit his style. We've all seen how Aberdeen plays. They just lump the ball up to Cosgrove, they flood the box and they play for set pieces. And this is where his stats really start taking a hit because if you combine this year's stats with Aberdeen and even the year before that, he's played 54 games. He's only managed 5 goals and 7 assists. It's, it's a bit of a weird situation that we're actually in, but I think I'm more encouraged by what I've seen at Kilmarnock because that's similar to what Gerard actually plays at the Glasgow Rangers, free-flowing attacking football. I'm not overly like sour on this one like I know a lot of you guys are. And rightly so, if that's your opinion, let me know down in the comments if you don't think he's good enough. But I think I've seen enough good things from when he was at Kilmarnock to be at least a little bit encouraged about the signing. But instead of just picking and choosing our stats based on the team or whatever he's played, let's actually reflect on the year that he's had because this is the year that he's earned a move to the Glasgow Rangers. I mean, this was a guy that was running down his contract at Birmingham City before this year. Now he is signing for the Glasgow Rangers. So Gerard Mark Allen's clearly seen something in him. And let's reflect on those overall stats. He's played 34 games. He sits at 9 goals and 10 assists. However, the majority of them, again, was all for Kilmarnock earlier on in the season. His six-month spell at Kilmarnock was absolutely incredible. The last six months with Aberdeen has been absolutely 
putrid. Now earlier on in the video I did mention that he can play anywhere along the front line which is obviously helping us, especially it helps his chances of playing. But let's dive a little bit deeper in and see what his kind of consistency is when he's out on the left well or he's out on the right and try and find what position he will play. So looking over at the left wing situation because I think we are absolutely stacked at this spot and I don't see him playing there at all if I'm being 100% honest with you because let's be fair, we've got Ryan Kent there, hopefully he's here next year. We've got Jordan Jones, his former commander teammate which he had a great understanding with. Go back and look at some of the earlier highlights on the season. Those two link up was absolutely brilliant. You'll go Glenn Middleton. And last but not least, we obviously have the returning Jamie Murphy. He will be here at the start of the season pushing for that starting spot. So he's got a lot of competition out on the left hand side. Has he done enough this season to push any of them away? Not really because he's only played one game there this season where he sits at zero goals and zero assists. However, when you jump over to the right hand side and you start looking at Rangers, as I've said many times on the channel and especially when we break down players, the right hand side of Rangers gives everyone an opportunity to play there because it's pretty much Daniel Candace or bust right now. Yes, we've got the incoming Jake Casey, which I think is going to personally play in that spot and challenge Daniel Kandias for the starting, but with Greg Stewart coming in there, that's another body that could potentially play, because let's be fair, Gresda, it sounds like Gerard's already moved on from him by his press conference comments, the way he's pulled them off on behind the doors friendlies, rightly or wrongly, because let's be fair, the nation, you share your opinions down and I'll read every single comment, some of you really rate Gresda and don't think he's been given an opportunity, but again, we don't know what's happening behind the scenes, you hear Gerard talking about the lack of effort and what desire for these boys that turned up in the friendly versus Liverpool. You look at the boys that was pulled off, Barisic, Gresda, Kyle Lafferty and Worrell, they could be potentially all moving on at the end of the summer. So that's why I think the right hand side of Rangers could be an opportunity for Greg Stewart to stake his place and really show some improvements because he is good with the ball, he's very very clever, he can get amongst it. Daniel Candace, we all love his work rate and his desire, however his final ball is usually so if Greg Stewart can recapture that form that he had at Kilmarnock where he was so clever and intelligent, getting his heat up and just picking passes inside the box and connecting with crosses like he did when he was usually out there in those situations, this could be a real option and a real chance for Greg Stewart. But let's move to a more productive position. Now this one is going to be very interesting when you actually look and reflect on the stats because starting at striker, he sits at 16 games, 9 goals and 7 assists when starting up front. That is quite interesting stats and is he brought in here to be the man that replaces Kyle Lafferty because Kyle Lafferty is quite clearly out, we saw that when he wasn't even picked among the starting 11 after what Gerard said about the work rate and everything like that, is he just to be the number 3, that genuinely could be the reason why he's been brought in just to be the backup to the backup of the striker position just in case we ever get to a semi-final and we have some problems with the striker just so we don't need to play boys like Sadiq again, that could be the reason. And the last place that Greg Stewart could potentially play for the Glasgow Rangers is centre attacking mid. That's right, that spot we wanted all season long until we realised, took a step back and went, wait, Scott Arfield's our man, let's flood the midfield, give an extra body and stop him running back in defence, put him forward and let him day. Arfield things? Greg Stewart could potentially fill in that spot again for rotation or fitness depending on the game whenever we're actually needed because he sits at 11 games and 2 assists so far, and the majority of them being for Aberdeen as Rocky's digging up the camera. And that is us all done and dusted with Greg Stewart's player profile. We have reflected on the man, we've looked at his stats, where he could potentially play for the Rangers, his competition for next season. Now all that's left is for you guys to get your thoughts and opinions down there in the comments section below. Are you happy about this transfer? Where do you think he's going to play? And lastly, this is a question I've been asked a lot since the news obviously broke. What type of signing is this? Is this a first team signing? Is this a squad player signing? Is this just a rotation-esque whenever the second or third player isn't available? What do you make of the signing genuinely? Because I'd really, really want to know. For me, this is just a squad player signing. And now as always it's time to jump over and hear from the people. There's been 696 votes. Thank you so much for getting involved. There's still over 25 minutes remaining so that's absolutely brilliant. 56% of the people votes for no. Rangers shouldn't have signed Greg Stewart. That one is interesting. So let's see what they've had to say. Stevie writes in, the reason I think he will be decent for us is his style of play suits our attacking style. He did it for Kelly but failed with the sheep due to their negative approach to football. Stuart, we just looked up here son. This is where it is. Scott Young says we need to improve the first 11 as a priority not another squad player. That is not needed. Improve the starting 11 and we will see improvements in the squad players as well. We need to get our priorities straight when it comes to signings and not just signing for the sake of signing. Scott Young, gone in deep there. Ricky Forbes says you cannot judge any player playing for Aberdeen because they have they have a Poundland Jose trying to get the game stopped and fans turned away. For Kamarnock, he looked decent and for us, I think he can shine and be a good alternative to Arfield 
in that position. That's Brian Ricky. That's something we obviously mentioned earlier on in the video as well. Kyle Morrison, right? Solid squad signing. Great. And the last one we'll actually write comes from... Bang, we'll stop it right there. And it comes from Aldo. He says, if Birmingham City don't want him, then why should we... We have enough players stealing a wage and a youth department brimming with talent, so maybe we should utilise our own resources. That is a fantastic, fantastic tweet because Josh McPeak plays out in the wing. Why is he not be given a chance rather than bringing other boys in? When he's in and around the first team, shouldn't he be given a choice first rather than other people's talents? I don't know. It's going to be a fun and interesting comment section. I'm looking forward to reading it. But that is the end of today's video. You've heard from the people. You've heard from myself. If you haven't done so already, you know what to do by now. Shout out to the legends that's bought a charity ticket to help us raise money as well for Sam H which is a mental health and suicide prevention charity. And as always, shout out to the 50 strong on the Patreon account. I greatly appreciate every single one of you guys. If you'd like to help support the channel, as always, the link for that is down there beside the charity tickets. I've been CJ Nova92. Thank you so much for watching and bye.